Hey there, Rock and Roll Junkies. Charlie here with another Grey Wolf review. This week, Anthrax with their album Among the Living. This is their hit album. This is the fan favorite. This is the one they say is the best album Anthrax has ever made. And personally, this is not my favorite Anthrax album. But it's one of my top Anthrax albums. This album just happened to be released in a time where, you know, the big four were releasing things like Master of Puppets, Rain in Blood, Peace Cells, and then Anthrax comes in with this one, Among the Living, and basically you're in the middle of the thrash boom in the mid in the late 80s basically. So this is really big for Anthrax. Scott has been said that this album made their career. This is the album that put them on the map and just catapulted them to stardom. So I get why the band considers this such a big deal to them. And I get also why the fans think this is their best album. I get it, I don't agree with it, but I get it. It's a really good album. Personally, I've listened to this album millions of times. I've listened to this album so much that I've burned myself out on it and I couldn't hear it anymore. Between, between me listening to it a thousand times, plus Anthrax putting basically most of this album into a set list, and then they're doing the anniversary thing where they play the whole album from beginning to end. Between that and me, it was kind of a little bit overkill and I kind of got tired of this album. It got into a little overrated category for me and I just stopped listening to it. I haven't heard this in like a year and a half, maybe almost two years, but going back to it for this review and listening to this from beginning to end, I realized why I like this album so much and why it's so good and why people think it's like the best thing they've ever made. Although I still don't think that. It's not my favorite album. I don't even know if this is their greatest album. I'd have to think, I'd have to stop and listen to their whole discography and think about it because I'm not really sure what their greatest album might be because an album that's my greatest album might not be my favorite album. So I don't know about Anthrax. But that being said, let's get into this. This is Among the Living. Now Among the Living came out March 22nd, 1987, which marks this year Back in March, at least, the 30th anniversary of this album. 30 years among the living. I love this album. I love anything with Joey. I'm not a big John Bush fan in Anthrax. So I was very happy when Joey came back. And well, now they're just doing this all the time. <laughs> I'm gonna with Joey. But still, I love Joey. I love everything they've done with Joey. I've loved some things they've done with John. But for the most part, Joey's my go-to choice for Anthrax, even though he was a second singer. This is Anthrax's third album and Joey's second album in the band and what a big album for him to do for the second album this is a great album let's get into this track by track with the first song this is the title track this is Among the Living now I really love the intro here it's real ominous and the drums come in just crashing in and then the guitars and the bass follow and just starts building up this tension and then you hear those classic just anthrax riffs those riffs that you just know are just so anthrax those like mosh riffs that just make you want to mosh great and then Joey singing comes in and the backup gang vocals I love Anthrax's use of backup gang vocals where they're all just singing you know together and it just sounds really really good it's, I think a New York thing because Swiss's sister also does that and they also do it great but I love it drums by Charlie Benante are just great throughout the whole song and the lyrics are just fun they're just fun to sing along to the solo here is pretty cool. It has kind of like an Egyptian vibe to it. The solo by Dan Spitz here. Now Dan and, well, the band have conflicting uh, thoughts on this album. Uh, Scott, I think, said that the music was made by Charlie and then Dan was like, well, no, I wrote my own riffs. I wrote my own solos and I played my own solos and I have demos of me playing my own solos. So it's going back and forth. I believe Dan that he wrote his own parts. Maybe Charlie wrote the rest, but I believe that Dan wrote his own parts. And I think Dan did a great job here with the solos. I love the ending when it's just Among, Among, Among. I love that. It's a very great ending, very funny. As I said, the song is really fun to sing along to in a live setting. These songs just translate so well live. Now we are at their second song. This is Caught in a Mosh. I love the opening. The riffs sound great, and then Charlie just lightly tapping the cymbals, you know, and then the bass just starts building up, and then Charlie has like this mini like drum solo right in the intro, and it's really cool, and then Joey comes in with this great voice. He has, Joey specifically has a great 
voice. He's a great singer. He has a lot of range. You know, in the big four, aside from Joy, maybe maybe James is the second one I would say that has a good voice. The other two really aren't singers. But the thing about Joey is, Joey isn't a thrash singer. Joey is a singer in a thrash band. Joey, if you put him, he can sing anything, you know. He can do anything. He just has that range. Which, you know, the other singers, like, let's say Tom or Ryan, I think Tom's voice mostly is just for thrash. Plus, Joey can do anything, and I just love Joey for that reason. And in this song, he just sounds so great, so powerful. Uh, the gang vocals come back in this one, which is great, you know. They do that a lot in these songs. Uh, this, again, it's a very fun song. The song is perfect for, like, the live concert, for the mosh pits, for thrashing. I just love the bass on this, on the whole track. I think um, Frank does a good job here. Great job with these bass tracks on this. Uh, another great solo with just hard hitting drums in the background. I love it. And this song just has this really strong ending. All the songs on this album have a strong ending. I think they all sound great. Love it. Let's go into number three. This is I Am The Law. Now, this one's supposedly Charlie wrote the riffs for this one. It's a great song. Right from the start, the great riffs and the bass just sound great. The drums uh, just lay down this great beat. And then, you know, the lyrics are super cool because it's about a comic book character. This is a song actually about a comic book character. It's about Judge Dredd. So it's a song about a comic book character, unlike, say, Wolverine Blues by Entomb, where it's not. So it's cool to have a song about a comic book character. You, most bands wouldn't do this, but Anthrax are known to do things that are kind of like fun and silly, but also sometimes dark. And this is Anthrax being Anthrax, you know. I think we Anthrax are pulled this off. But it's just a fun song to sing along to. The middle part is just so thrash. It's just so fast. And the solo plays over it just sounds so good. Uh, the bass is real loud on this. And then Joey just screams. And near the end just sounds so good, and then it has just a strong, strong ending. Love it. I have a lot. Great song. Let's move it to number four. Evil Nick Professor, NFL. Now, this song I read that journalists would ask uh, Scott, why did you write a song about football, about the NFL? And then Scott would be like, you clearly have not like, looked into the lyrics because it's not about football. And I never realized until now that NFL and football connection. I just thought it was funny. But this song, like, lyrically, it's very, very good. It's, you know, about John Belushi and about, well, you know, addiction, be it to alcohol or drugs. It's a very, like, dark and deep song. It's just, it's a classic anthrax song, which has just this classic riff right from the intro. You know, this one's coming. Uh, the bass in the intro is real loud, and I love it. I didn't like this one at first. I will, when I first started listening to this album, I didn't like it. I found it kind of uh, fillerish, I would skip it. But after listening to it a bunch, a bunch of times, it became one of my favorites. Now I listen, I mean, I love this whole album now, but in the beginning, it was kind of like, uh, to me. But now, you know, I've burned myself out of this hum because I love this song. I love the backup vocals. You can really hear Scott in the back screaming. And I just love Joey singing, you know, kind of singing slow. And it's like, and I fell. I love that. I just, it's a great song. Move to number five. This is Skeleton in the Closet. Great drums right from the get go. Thunderous riffs. Backup vocals, great. Uh, this is another one I didn't like at first. I remember I did not like this song at first. I would skip it all the time. But then, you know, uh, over time, it became one of my favorites on the album. I love this song. But I would say that if. I had to say, which is my least favorite on the album, I would probably pick this one. As I said, I love every song on this album, I just think the other eight tracks are better than this one. So this one would be my least favorite. But I love the solo on this by Dan, and it's a good song, it's a great song. Let's move into number six, Indians. Now this is another one where Charlie supposedly wrote the riffs. This is another classic for Anthrax, you will always hear this song. Uh, the tribal drums in the intro, super cool. The drums throughout this whole thing are just killer. Probably the best drumming Charlie did on this album. The riffs are great, and the bass sounds fantastic. Frank's bass sounds so good. Frank is one of my favorite bassists 
ever, and I love his work on this album specifically. It's a great song lyrically. You know, it's about Native Americans, and knowing that Joey has Native American ancestry, this must mean a lot to him to do this song. And it's just a very powerful song with a powerful performance from the band, as well as Joey. I love the part where they go, WAR DANCE! You know, and they scream that, and then it just flows so well, and the song is just strong finish, just very fast, very thrash. I love it. Number seven, this is One World. Now, it has a very strong intro, right from the riffs, the drums, the bass, they're all going at it. It's very thrash, it's very fast, it's very in your face. Joey sounds so strong on this one. And then the back of vocals are great, you can hear Scott in this one. This might be my favorite song, it might be tied with another song for my favorite. I can't really pick between this and another song. So for now, just think about this being one of my favorite songs. But this song's real heavy, it has a fantastic solo. Uh, lyrics are amazing on this one, and it's just another great finish. You know how I say albums they have great finishes? Like every song has like a big, strong finish on this. It's, it's amazing, really. Let's go into number eight, ADI, Horror of It All. I love the intro. You know, it's very slow. It's kind of ominous and dark, and you really don't know what's coming next. The riffs it come in with the bass and the drums, and it just sounds so cool, and then you get a chugging away, you know, ch -ch 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 -ch. and you know, it builds up, and it gets louder. It's just like really, really metal at a point. And then the vocals, the vocals come in at like the three minute mark in this song. So it's just like basically instrumental to three minutes. But it just sounds so cool and it just really has your attention while it's just building up. And it just Joey sounds great here. This is, and then near the end, Joey's screams are fantastic. The drums go crazy near the end. And it just the wrist and everything just speeds up and it's just so metal, so good. I love this song, Horror of It All. Let's go into number nine. This is the final song, Imitation of Life. This is a real headbacker. This, the drums, the riffs, the bass, all heavy, real thrash. Joey's voice is just out of this world on this one. Just out of this world. Great singing, you know, it's screaming, it's just going real fast at this one. The lyrics are amazing. The solo is just blistering by Dan. It just has such a great and it makes me want to hear the whole thing. This song, the whole album, just all over again. This is the other song that's tied for my favorite. I can't really choose between Imitation of Life and One World as my favorite. This one might have the edge, maybe, but I can't really choose between the two. They're both my top two in the album. Tied for number one. Now this album was produced by Eddie Kramer. A classic producer, Eddie Kramer, who produced classic albums in the 70s. And Anthrax chose him because while well, they were fans of his work, like with Kiss and Jimi Hendrix, they were very big fans and they wanted that sound, like the classic 70s sound. So they went with him, but there were struggles with him because he kind of wanted to sound like modern day, like 80s. Like, everybody wanted to sound like Def Leppard at the time. Everybody wanted to be like, you know, Mutt Lang would kind of overproduce them. And kind of Eddie Kramer kind of wanted to go in that direction. While well, the band didn't, the band wanted him to go in his old direction. And so it was constant back and forth fighting with the guy to make him sound like his old self, but he wanted to sound more modern. And it was just constant fighting between the band and them. But it made them really angry, Scott said. And that anger just fired them up and made them more aggressive in the studio, made them more fast and angry. And it really shows the music. So I kind of feel that bringing in Eddie Kramer was kind of a good thing, even though he didn't initially do what they wanted him to do, kind of him, them pushing him, and him pushing them, kind of resulted in this just great, great sound, a great album. It's really cool. And the album, the title as well as the artwork, was inspired by Stephen King's novel, The Stand, which I think is pretty cool. But the coolest thing is that this album was released six months after the death of Cliff Burton, the bassist from Metallica, and they did dedicate this album to him, which I thought was a very nice thing to do. And overall, I think this album, overall, is fantastic. It's one of the great, great albums of 80s thrash. As you know, it came out in that time where all the iconic albums were coming out. And if you think about it, uh, Master of Puppets, Rain of Blood, Pete Sells, 
Among the Living, those are like the top albums for all of those, all these bands. So it's really just came out at a really good time. You know, the big four just released some of the biggest four albums in all thrash. And I think this one is really, really good. I will say that, you know, I might not consider it my favorite, but I still think it's a great album in heavy metal, a great album for Anthrax, and a great album overall. I know a lot of people don't like Anthrax, they kind of put them down. I say that maybe you should check this one out. This is the fan favorite, and you might kind of feel it's overrated, but I feel it has a lot going for it. Like, I feel like these songs are really good. Are they the best? I don't know, but they're really good. So you should take some time if you don't like Anthrax, maybe listen to this album specifically. I personally would recommend, uh, well, let's see, the one before this, Spreading the Disease, maybe if you like kind of like heavier things, because this, you know, is the fan favorite, but then again, if you're not a fan, you might not like this one. So i have tried this one now. If this one doesn't work, then try Spreading the Disease. Overall, I think it's a great album. I love this album. I love everything about it. I love Joey. I love Scott, Dan, Frank, Charlie. All did a great job on this. Love this album. So, that's it for the review. Let's move into my pick of the bit. For my pick of the bit this week, my pick will be Iron Maiden with their second album, Killers. This is with their original singer, Paul Diano. Well, original in studio because they had singers before him when they recorded their first album. But the original singer in studio, Paul Diano. This is their second album with him. This is their final album with him. And I recommend that album. It's, it's a really good album. Anthrax, you know, are very big fans of Iron Maiden. They even happened to record this album, Among the Living, in a studio that Iron Maiden would use a lot. And so I thought it would be a really cool suggestion for you people to listen to this album. Uh, I feel like sometimes people don't over, over, just overlook Paul Diano era Iron Maiden. Personally, I prefer his replacement. I prefer Bruce Dickinson. I'm one of Bruce guy, but I still think the stuff they did with Paul was fantastic. These first two albums are great. Specifically, Killers is a very good album. Listen to that if you have. Let's do it again. That being said, remember to stay. Metal, stay devil, stay evil, alright.